Yeah, I end up I end up going homeless in Arizona. I couldn't leave the state. I couldn't really make money like I needed to. And when you go from making like what ten thousand a month to two thousand, them ten thousand a month bills are still there. Well, let's go in and yeah. get it in. Let's not waste no time, bro. Let's not waste no time. Ghosts back in the building, still hogging. Still, still hogging. Well, welcome back, man. It's 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 been a minute. It has it has to be like I don't know, like a couple of years for me and you, right? Yeah, it, it's been about I think what was it, twenty twenty one? I think so. I, I think it was about twenty twenty one was the last time that we that we connected with each other, man. Yeah. So yeah, it was twenty twenty one. So lot lots has changed. Welcome back to YouTube, man. You're one of the originals that that started with oh, yeah. me. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. that started with me back in the day. The YouTube trucker. Well, let's let's start from the video, bro. You you drop a lot of bombs, man. Like you <laughs> you you was in jail. You 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 lost your trucks. Take me back since the last time we talked. What happened, bro? I think since the last time we talked, man, just personal stuff, just per my personal life. And then the fact I got a child now, like a lot changed. And um, let me see. Well, let's start with what happened to the what happened to the business. I still got my I still got my three original trucks. Like I still got those, but I acquired five more from one of my a good friend of mine. But I ended up losing the contract that those trucks were on just because of everything else I had going on at the time. But as far as like my three trucks, I still got those. I'm just not running them right now because everything imploded. Um, basically, what took me under it was two things. My personal life and I got into an accident. Well, one of my trucks got into an accident. It got hit by a Winco truck. So the Winco truck, we had like, you know, Arizona, we'd be having dust storms. So this bad dust storm had hit and my driver was, I guess she panicked and um, she slammed on the brakes and a Winco driver ended up rear ending her. And I mean, completely knocked the, the tire, the tandems off the trailer, all that. It was a bad accident. I don't know how he walked away from it with just a couple scratches. But um, when that situation happened, it was like, you know, you got to go in for the accident drug test and everything else. Well, Winco's insurance and my insurance, they all got talking and Winco was like, when the driver goes in for the drug test, it's company policy with them, or at least their insurance person was saying that the driver has to take a hair follicle too, but that's not per DOT. So when my driver went in to take the piss test, she did that and then they tried to slip in the hair follicle and she refused it. So when you refuse it, that's an automatic failure. So then Winco's insurance took that and ran with it. They tried to say that the driver was under the influence, and that's why she didn't um, want to do the hair follicle, and it was just a whole bunch of mess. So when it was all said and done, I don't know how Winco considered it an act of God when you 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 ran into the back of my trailer. But that's what happened. Um, and then they also deemed me at fault because – on the dash cam that the Winco truck had, it showed the truck going in front of Winco and then slamming on the brakes. So the truck didn't have enough time. The Winco driver didn't have enough time to respond. And it was um, it was a dust storm. So they deemed me at fault. Make a long story short, I ended up getting a $68,000 bill from, um, from Snyder because it was a Snyder trailer that was towed out. So I ended up getting that bill, and then um, I ended up getting an accident, an at-fault accident on my insurance. So with that and then all the other financial stuff I was going through, I couldn't get insured. With Nobody would insure me for my renewal. So I ended up having to shut the authority down, which I really didn't care because, like I said, I had, I had just went to – wait, I think the accident was in August. I went to jail in September, and I was just like – I threw my hands up. I was like, screw it. It is what it is. Before we get to the jail part, man, let's let's okay. talk a little bit about the accident because I know accidents for a small company of your size, or you or you being a businessman, fleet owner, and I know how 
getting getting in truck accidents could be a nuclear for you guys, man. You know, I want you to just let these guys know out here that's that's that want to hurry up and be truck owners and I'm trying to buy my own truck so I can run and do this, that, and the third. Let them know when an accident of that magnitude happens to to a to a to a small fleet, what it could do to your fleet, man. It 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 could literally shut you down completely. Am I am I am I right in the saying? Yeah, that? yeah, it will. Or you'll have to get like some insurance that'll be through the roof. But at the time, I think I had five trucks on my insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So if I'm paying, we'll say fifteen hundred per truck and I got five trucks, that's a lot of money to sell out, especially if you can't get a renewal because of the accident. Now, as far as your, your driver goes, how long she was driving before the accident? Like, what was her experience? Uh, I think she had like two years experience. Okay. How, how did you come by finding her or did she find you? How did I find her? I think I put a, a ad out on like Craigslist or something like that. Okay. 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 And she had responded to it. Okay. So... So she's it's it's a dust storm making it hard to see. The camera on the truck that ran into her showed that what she came from behind him and then cut over in front of him, something like that. Yeah. She was going about seventy miles an hour and she seen it and I guess she panicked and and rapidly slowed down. So they're trying to say that she impeded traffic pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which they told me if I would have lawyered up, a lawyer could have fought that and easily beat it. But I looked into it. I looked into it heavy. But the fact that I went to jail and I already had a lawyer dealing with my my personal case, they wouldn't take on the case. They said something about um, I already had something going on with the law firm or something, and I couldn't have multiple uh Something about multiple lawyers. Was, I, I don't know. It was like something about multiple lawyers and it was a conflict of interest or something like that. Okay. So as far as the, as far as your, I think it was just an excuse. So as far as your female driver go, the, the, the company, they couldn't force the, the hair follicle test on her. Right. Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought they couldn't force that. Oh, okay. But then they tried, I think what messed me up. Cause I had drivers in the past that had, got popped with like marijuana and all that so it it just looked bad on my company okay okay because like like i said winco's lawyer their their little legal team they started digging up everything trying to get themselves out of the whole situation and i was just like yeah i'm gonna need to lawyer up and then i couldn't even i couldn't even get a lawyer and i had so much personal drama going on i just i said screw it. so as far as the young lady goes she, re she refused the, the hair follicle, did that affect her uh, going into the SAP program now, or was that just an isolated thing? No, nah, I never, it was like an isolated thing, because I didn't want to report it, because it would have messed her up. Like, technically, I was supposed to, and I didn't. So she's working, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. She started working back home, but I had his own authority, and every now and then, she would work for him. So she just went working for him full time. So that truck ain't... It ain't yeah, nothing wrong trailer. with the truck. Oh, it was just the trailer. Nah, nah. We got the truck. Yeah, we got the truck inspected and all that the next day, and it was cool. We actually sent it back out on the road. You you still cool with the lady, or what's your relationship now? I mean, I'm cool with her. She's more cool with my son's mother, but I was always just kind of like standoffish with her. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can feel you on that. You know, it's a female, so. She, she's the reason why your company went under, pretty much. I can't really say her. I would, it was just a, a weird uh, situation. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, so all together, Ghost, what was the what was the total? Well, you said you went to jail, and we're going to touch on that in a second. But what was the what was the total damage that uh, that you came out of the pocket for the entire accident? At sixty eight thousand, it was like sixty eight thousand four hundred something. Wow. Yeah, but I end up having to file bankruptcy on it. Yeah, it sucked. What was that, Chapter 11, 7, or 13? It was uh, 7. Oh, it was oh, that was clear out. God damn it, man. Yeah, yeah, it was a Chapter 7. But the cool part about it was other trucks, the three trucks that I do have, 
my holding company owns those. So, and they were just renting them to my transportation company. So, you know, can't get something from a company. So, yeah. they they didn't come at they didn't come after you personally. Like, they didn't try to come at your personal finances. I thought they were, All but right. they couldn't go after that either cuz I ended up losing everything because of the going to jail. All right. All right. Like everything imploded. So, you say you went to jail in August. What what, what September? What? Oh, September of the same of the same year the accident, right? Yep, a month later. Wow. So what happened? Yeah, it was what? so much that went on. What what happened, bro? Basically, basically me and my son's mother split in uh February of 2022. Okay. Uh we split because I'm not going to go into too much detail and I'm not going to, you know, beat her up about everything. Right. But we technically split in 2022 in February. Um because you know our our relationship just wasn't working. Uh, we got together in 2021. I gave it 11, 12 months, and there was no change, so I left. Um, 2022 hit, um, and it's still like it was still a lot of drama. I left in February. I found out she was pregnant in March, and I guess she thought that was gonna make me come back to her. And when it didn't, it was just you know the bitter ex situation now she's pregnant and now it's still like even then i was still trying to help her but it, it just it just wasn't working out and then september it was um labor day weekend and she popped up at my house to make a long story short she popped up at my house trying to create a problem with the people that were there because i just dropped a video about it the people that were there she didn't get the answer that she wanted so she walked outside called the cops told the cops i beat her up played the whole i'm pregnant i'm pregnant thing or card and i i she scratched her hand like she had like a scratch on her hand or something and cops end up pulling me over because i left the house like she was outside when i left I ended up getting pulled over, and the first two cops that pulled me over, they were cool. It was the third cop that had, like, showed up. He was the same cop that had already been to my house in July because she popped up at, like, it was, like, 3 in the morning. She popped up and created an issue with me and a female that I had over. And the girl ended up calling the cops on her then, and, and I tried to get her trespass from my house then. Didn't work. Cops wouldn't do it because she played the pregnant card and the oh we're married but separated card and the cops didn't do nothing so now fast forward to september that same cop told me if he ever had to come back to my house he was going to take somebody to jail the cop pops back up and he's like oh i remember this house and i remember you know these two individuals he did his little investigation he pulled back up um to where we were, and then he ended up basically taking me to jail on domestic violence. It was assault with bodily injury and disorderly conduct. So I ended up basically spending like nine hours in jail. But that also messed me up because a week before, or a week before I went, or a week after I went to jail, I was supposed to take my hazmat. Like I was supposed to get my hazmat back on my license. Because I had a fuel contract that those five trucks were going to be put on. And I was going to be going to Houston for like two months to start the, the little contract. And then I was going to be getting drivers put on and all that. And then coming back to AZ. Once I went to jail, all that went out the window. Because I couldn't even pass the damn fingerprints. So that's really what completely took me under. Man. Yeah, because I had a whole nother authority and all that that I was going to put all the trucks under. But like I said, once I went to jail, that was it. I just threw my hands up with everything because I tried. I had to get a lawyer. How long you spent in jail? You said what? How long you spent in jail for that? Like nine hours. Oh, that was oh, that was it. Oh, OK. OK. So it wasn't no. Yeah, it was just nine hours. But you had to go to court for it, though, they, right? Yeah, and that, that's when it started. That's when, like, the real problem started was after I got out. Because they, they let me out on a zero bond or zero bill with release conditions. At first, I couldn't leave Arizona, but I told them I'm a truck driver, and I go from Cali to AZ. So I made sure they put that in my, like, paperwork that I could travel, you know, state lines because right. I ain't trying to get caught up. 
So they did that, but, you know, everything went south from there because I got a video that's dropping on Tuesday where I'm explaining the aftermath of it. So, like, basically, oh, I was saying, so basically once um, 2023 hit, because of a bunch of other situations that popped up, the judge ended up revoking my privileges to lead a state. So they told me I had to get a local CDL job um, because I got basically a fa- I got falsely accused of something that I didn't do, and it basically revoked my like you know my privileges to lead a the state. They told me I could get a local trucking job. So even then, I'm like, all right, you know, I think this is a bunch of BS. And when I went to go try to apply for local jobs, I kept getting de- denied because I had this misdemeanor domestic violence um, charge. And it was like, I was like, damn, I might as well should have got a felony for this because they told me that I was basically a, a liability just because of the type of charge it was and the severity of it, even though it's a misdemeanor, that I could easily pop off on somebody at, at the workplace and that would be a liability to their company. That's what two local trucking jobs told me. And I'm like, what the hell? Man. End up having an Uber and Lyft. That that looks like everybody's go to now that that goes from trucking. Then I got kicked off of, I got kicked off a Lyft platform because of the Uber. So I had to Uber. Uber didn't kick me off. Domestic violence is 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 a tricky one, especially if the if the person shows any kind of injury. So here in Ohio, if it's a domestic violence case where the officers will come and if if the man shows any type of injury, the woman will be arrested. Or if the woman shows any type of injury, the man will be arrested. And if both of them does, they they both goes. Yeah, DV is 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 real real touchy. Being yeah, that, it really is. Being that's that, what I realized. Being that uh, being that that happened, you you rent the court, right? So what was you able to explain to the judge? Like what really happened? Was you able to bring some witnesses with you to 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 get that charge dismissed or whatever the case? Well, that's the thing. Like basically, um, what happened was I got a I lawyered up, and then it got to the point I couldn't afford my attorney anymore because the attorney was gonna basically get everything dismissed because it was all it was all falsified. Right. And they, we had all the proof and the documentation proving that. And then I end up having the, um, I guess I, I couldn't afford the attorney, so I forgot what they call it. But they ended up giving me a public defender or really a public pretender because uh, that dude didn't even care. He was like, okay, you're going to just take the diversion. And that's basically where you're pleading guilty to it and you end up taking like 26 classes and after you do that you got to pay a couple fines do some community service and stay a whole year without getting in trouble and like i told him i'm like i rather you know do what the old lawyer had set up and he's like well that's them this is me he's like you can either take this or nothing wait a minute wait and a minute. i'm like all right he's supposed to be working the public defender supposed to be working for you so how was that? That don't yeah, make no sense. He, that he that really was crazy. Didn't care. So that's so he, he's like a take it to leave it type dude. Like, bro, you, ain't ain't you supposed to be my lawyer? Like, wow. Yeah, that's exactly what I told him. And I was like, you know what? I'm not about to argue with this dude. Then I was already, I was still having issues with my son's mother because now my child had been born, and it was yeah, it was it was a lot of drama and just toxicness. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just take that, do these classes, get this year out the way, and just stay off the radar. And that's exactly what I did. That's why I disappeared from YouTube. Now your son, son, right? Your son is born. How old is your son now? Yeah. Uh, he's a year and a half now. All right. So now now y'all got a baby together, bro. Like, well, obviously the relationship between y'all two ain't good, but... What about the parenting? Like, are you able to see your son? And did she hit you? Obviously, she hit you with the with the DV. So I I wouldn't put it past her for hitting you with the, with the child support. No, I'm actually about to put myself on child support. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm about to put myself on child support. 
because it, it's just it when you try to when you're trying to co-parent and the other person is more stuck on a relationship than trying to co-parent with you it makes it hard so okay which i got videos about that coming out too because like i said i'm putting myself on it because i'm just i'm tired as a father and somebody that wants to be an active father, I want to spend that solo quality time with my son, and I don't get it like I should okay. without it being a fight okay. or having to answer a whole bunch of questions. So i just rather get the courts involved and let them decide because, you know, two people can't be mature adults and agree on what's good for the, you know, the benefit of the child. That's something that I haven't heard a man saying that yo i want to put myself <laughs> on child support usually the man be like no i'm not doing child support but but i i see you i i i see you trying to be a father to your child and in order to do that you you have to get the courts involved in order to do that exactly oh, yeah okay. like for me it's more of for me, it's more of peace of mind. If I got to pay child support to get the, the real peace of mind that I deserve, that I have deserved since 2021, that's what I got to do. Because my peace is everything. That's what's up, man. You disappeared from YouTube, getting your situations back together. I like that. And, and just recently, you, you popped back up on YouTube. And it looks as though everything is going, is going pretty good. So it sounds like you're driving. I hear the beeping in the background. So are you still local? Oh, yeah. Are you are you still local? You still No, nah, I'm running OTR. Oh, okay. They, um they actually dismissed my case in uh February twenty eighth of this year. Okay. So they dismissed my case. I got my damn gun rights back. I got everything turned around with that part. I paid all my fines and did everything I needed to do. Um and then as far as my company, um projecting to have everything back up and running by the end of the year i just had to create a lot of distance and boundaries okay so the idea for you is to is to get your company back so you can go in here and be a fleet owner right yeah yeah i can get my fleet back i can get this fuel contract back so well more power to you on that bro all right so you said in the midst yeah. of you said in the midst of all of this while you was trying to get everything together you you tried to get with with some companies that kind of like just threw you to the curve because of your because of your background how hard and how many companies we're talking about here that just that didn't give you the chance that you needed to, to at least try to start to make things right. Well, UPS shot me down. Uh, FedEx shot me down. Um, who else was it? This company called Ten Roads shot me down. Uh, it was a few companies. You know what? Actually, I did some under the radar stuff in uh, 2023. I got on with that company, Crown Point, the Russian company. Okay. And I, and you know what? I watched a video on it, and I was like, damn, what did I get myself into? And at the time, I actually teamed with my son's mother. We both went to that company because I was still trying to, you know, be an active parent. And I figured, you know, we both could get a bag together, even though we didn't do some crazy stuff. I was like, I'm going to put that to the side because it's business. It's nothing personal. But I realized I couldn't do that because she still was like, stuck on the whole personal relationship and i'm like i can't focus like i can't get to the bag when i got you hounding me about a relationship that i don't want okay okay so that that didn't last very long but the russian companies would take me but i yeah i wouldn't recommend working for no damn russian company because they crown point owe me some money well so i i i did a review of of that company i decided to do a review on the company and yeah the the call wasn't wasn't a great call it it really wasn't it just yeah so yeah you, you guys got to be careful of these yeah, of these real. black ops companies man because oh, they like like you said they'll take you they'll bring you on but they'll also f you in the in in the end too it's yeah. So you said they owe you some. They owe you some money, and they it looks as though they owe a lot of people money. So, all right, man. So yeah, Uber, that's what this guy told me when I was there. Uber, Lyft, a lot of truck drivers, former 
truck drivers. Oh, they're oh, they're leaving the trucking industry and they they decided to do Uber and Lyft. Oh. Now they do Uber and Lyft. Yeah, it's pretty lucrative. You put your hand in the Uber and Lyft, but you said Lyft kicked you off the off the platform. What what happened with that? Yeah, they 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 ran a background check and it popped up that you know I had that misdemeanor of uh, domestic violence charge and they kicked me off the platform because it's a violation of their terms or something. So I was like, all right. You was able to do Uber. How how long how long you was able to do Uber before you actually got back into the truck? Uh, I was doing it off and on for a year. It was that bad, man. Damn. Yeah, Damn. yeah. For a whole year, I couldn't do nothing. Damn. And then the courts, like, because I, I was dealing with other stuff, too. And I realized, like, my best bet is to create boundaries from, you know, my whole situation. Right. And, and distance. Okay, okay. Because it was like, even though I was doing all that, I was still having problems because I stand on them like I should have. So I was still getting in trouble, getting in weird-ass situations. Like, so it just... Yeah, a huge lesson learned. All right, so bro, man, being that you are back, you look like you're doing good, getting things back together. You're back on YouTube. You're telling your story, and I do appreciate you coming back with me and uh, chopping it up with me, man. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, like like I told myself, I'm tell a lot of people are like, oh, why are you putting your business out there like that? Because it'll help somebody. Because I ain't the only person that then had a DV charge or went down that road before and then thought that shit, you know, it, it's the end all for me. So I'm just trying to show people that, hey, you can get past all that. And this is the steps that I had to take. And if I could do it, anybody can. Now, what do you what do you got to say to the people out there that that don't believe you, Ghost Man? Because oh, there there's been a couple of that that kind of like question, like, yeah, I I, I don't believe this guy. What, what do you got to say to the naysayers? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. So a lot of people be like, oh, I'm a scam. I'm this. I'm that. But I ain't never sold nothing to nobody. I ain't never. Tried to sell a course at nobody for money. I never did none of that. I had a couple situations where, you know, I had a driver that took me to court for the 25 grand. But at the end of the day, it's like this. Business is business. If you decide to leave my company or whatever, you got to turn in everything that, that you basically, I gave you. So you want to go play games with my trailer? You want to hide it in places and play stupid games where you're going to win stupid prizes? So, you know, he took me to court. It was whatever. He sued my brokerage, which was already going under. And, I mean, it is what it is. If anybody knows business, you know, I just had to file on my transportation company. The brokerage was already, that was already in the works with it. So you put two and two together, you know the outcome of that. So at outside of that, the naysayers are going to always say what they ever, whatever they got to say. So people can talk about. So what about that? What, what happened with that? You you found this driver. You you thought it was cool. Nah, I'm he um he was my old club buddy. Like we used to, we were in a motorcycle club together. Okay. And like at the time, I really didn't want to deal with him, but I was like, you know what, this man, he's been bugging the shit out of me for like the last six months. I was like whatever I'll, I'll give him a shot but then he was on some bullshit because he was trying to he was basically pretending to be me when it came to certain contracts that he was trying to get and he started getting tickets and stuff and they started coming to my house and i'm like bro what's up with all this so it was a lot it was a lot going on in the background that wasn't spoke about so and he, i just was fed up like so he took you to court like if you if yeah, he was he, doing if he was doing ill stuff to you how how was it possible for him to take you to court he he stole he stole your stuff that he ran oh yeah he took my trailer and he got mad because I didn't pay him oh which like I told him okay. give me my give me my stuff back and you'll get paid then he he had me go to Cali because he claimed he had my trailer and had me my mom and um one of my drivers waiting around at the the ta in ontario and he never showed up like he started he was just playing games and i didn't have time for all that so i was just like it is what it is so did did you get your stuff back did he would well yeah yeah i ended up getting my trailer back did he get paid nope sure didn't he took me to court 
So the so the judgment was was in your favor, I guess. The judgment was in his favor for my brokerage. Oh. He sued my brokerage. He didn't sue me. He okay. sued the brokerage. Oh, okay. and it was already out going out the door. Oh, okay, okay. So he had the chance to personally sue me, but he chose to sue my brokerage instead. So okay, and being that the broker that the brokerage was going out the door, there. There wasn't no money there. So are you are you still well wait, are you still liable through the brokerage to pay this guy? And how much are we talking here? Nope. It was just ten grand. Oh, okay. Well I'm Yeah, nah, I'm not once it once it went under, that was it. Well let, let me ask you this. So, let me ask you this, Ghost. You you said it was ten grand. Was that was that before or after the stuff started happening? Like he did run the lows for you, right? He ran the lows, but you played games with me. Oh, okay. Like, if he just would have played, just like you go to Swift. You go to Swift, you rent their truck and trailer, or you drive the truck and trailer, and when you leave, you give them their stuff back. You don't go hide it in another state or play games about giving them their stuff back. You're going to give it back, turn it in, make sure everything is accounted for, and they're going to pay you. Okay. But when you start playing games, you ain't getting paid. Like it, it's simple. I uh, no, I I hear what you're saying. I hey, you it's if you if I was in your position and things wasn't going right between me and him and and when it comes time to pay him and he's not giving me my stuff back, you got to give me my stuff back and then I give you your money. But I I guess what I'm trying to I guess what I'm doing here is trying to play devil's advocate like was there tension before him, before he started hiding your stuff and all like that, like yeah, there was an underlying issue, but that's not something I can really speak on. Okay, okay, okay. On here, okay, I got you. No, no, no. It, it, I got, it's, it's bigger than trucking. I got you. <laughs> I I got you. I got you. Okay, so there. Okay, all right. So I I got you. I got you. All right. Well, Ghost Man. Yeah, there well, was an underlying issue. Well, Ghost Man, hey, thank you for the time, bro. I really appreciate you. I know you you're a little busy out there. You're trying to get everything back together. I, I appreciate you coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, man. And uh, and damn, much success to you, bro. Yeah, like I said, this is my story about how I'm turning it around. And I mean, it is what it is. I'm gonna sit up there and fake it because yeah, I I hit a a hard spot, but in three months. When I'm back to being my old self, people will know why. Because I'd have been through some shit. Hey, sometimes Stuff. sometimes there's always bad that comes with the good, man. It's just the way how yeah, people... Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, it's just the way how people navigate through it, man. And it looks as though you, you muddied the waters and everything. And it looks like you're getting it all back together, man. It's a, it's a, it's a teachable moment. This is, this is moments that you want to come and let people know that might be going through the same thing and you just showing yourself like, Hey, here I am. I went through it and this is what I did to overcome it. And you can too. Yep. Exactly. What would be your overall message before you get on up out of here, man? What, what would be your overall message to the, to the people that, that might be having that same issue? Honestly, pick and choose um, the circle you hang around. Like, like that old saying, go Eagles fly with Eagles. So you don't want to be, I guess, chilling with a bunch of pigeons because at the end of the day, uh, I think was it Nipsey that said, if you hang around 10 rich people, you'll be the 11th. You hang around 10 broke people, you'll be the 11th. I mean, that that is true. 